Our topic today is migraine headaches. Migraines are generally identified as headaches that affect one side of the head, are pulsating in nature, and can last anywhere from 2 to 72 hours. Symptoms often associated with migraines may include nausea, vomiting, and sensitivity to light, sound, or smell. The pain and associated symptoms of migraines are often made worse by physical activity. Migraine headaches are more common in women than in men and tend to run in families. There are two main types of migraines, those preceded by what is known as an aura and those without aura. Migraines without aura are more common and make up about 85% of cases. They may be preceded by fatigue and irritability. An aura is a sensory experience that precedes the headache. Auras typically consist of visual symptoms, such as flickering lights, spots, or loss of vision. Sensory symptoms may include needle sensations or numbness, and problems with speech or other neurological symptoms. Possible triggers of migraines include increased stress, changes in sleep patterns, and fluctuation of estrogen during menstrual periods. Dietary sources such as monosodium glutamate, aged cheese, and chocolate may also increase the risk for migraine headaches. Some non-pharmacologic measures that can be taken to prevent migraines include avoidance of triggers, also maintaining regular sleep patterns. It is important, so be consistent with getting up times and going to bed times. During an attack, retiring to a darkened room also helps to alleviate symptoms. During a migraine, the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve 5, becomes activated. This results in the release of neuropeptides from cranial nerve 5. The neuropeptides include vasoactive inhibitory peptide, or VIP, substance P, and calcitonin gene-related peptide, or CGRP. These neuropeptides cause painful neurogenic inflammation in the meningeal vasculature, causing mast cell degranulation, plasma protein extravasation, vasodilation, and activation of nociceptors, all which contribute to the migraine headache. These neuropeptides play an important role in trigeminal vascular pain transmission in migraine headaches. Pharmacologic treatment of acute migraines using ergots and triptans act to decrease or inhibit the release of neuropeptides from cranial nerve 5. This action will decrease the inflammation neuropeptides cause, including decreasing cerebral vasodilation and decreasing pain. Ergots and triptans cause this decreased neuropeptide release by activating 5-HT1B and 5-HT1D presynaptic autoreceptors. When these autoreceptors are stimulated, the release of neuropeptides is inhibited. This in turn causes a decrease in cerebral vasodilation and a decrease in migraine pain. There are also 5-HT1B receptors on cerebral vessels, and ergots and triptan stimulating these causes vasoconstriction, taking away the vasodilation associated with migraines. Ergots also activate alpha-1 receptors on cerebral vessels, causing further vasoconstriction. Ergots may be used in the acute treatment of migraines and include dihydroergotamine and ergotamine. Overall, dihydroergotamine is more effective at relieving migraines. As mentioned, ergots act as agonists at 5-HT1B and 5-HT1D receptors, leading to less release of neuropeptides and vasoconstriction. They also are partial agonists at alpha-1 receptors, causing further vasoconstriction. Dihydroergotamine is available for intravenous, intramuscular, and subcutaneous, as well as intranasal administration. Ergotamine may be given sublingually. Ergot should not be used in those that are pregnant or with cardiovascular disease, hypertension, liver, or kidney disease. Triptans are 5-HT1B and 5-HT1D agonists. Their mechanism involves causing vasoconstriction, inhibiting neuropeptide release, and inhibiting pain pathways in the brainstem. Medications in this class include sumatriptan, Zolmatriptan, Rizotriptan, Elatriptan, Almotriptan, Neratriptan, and Frovatriptan. 
Sumatriptan can be given subcutaneously by nasal powder or nasal spray and orally. Zolmatriptan can be giving, given nasally or orally. The rest are only given orally. All triptans have been shown to be safe and effective for most patients, but naratriptan and frobotriptan have a slower onset and appear to be the least efficacious at relieving acute migraines. Remember that patient response varies. If one triptan doesn't work, another may be tried. It's best to take triptans early when symptoms first start and don't use triptans for more than 10 days out of the month in order to avoid overuse headaches. Triptans should be avoided in those with certain conditions like hemiplegic or basilar migraine, ischemic stroke or heart disease, variant angina, uncontrolled hypertension, and pregnancy. Always consider drug-drug interactions that may occur. A newer class of migraine medications are the CGRP antagonists. Remember that CGRP was one of the neuropeptides released from the trigeminal nerve and plays an important role in trigeminal vascular pain transmission in migraines. These drugs antagonize CGRP receptors or bind to the CGRP ligand, blocking the effects of CGRP. Arinumab, framazinumab, and galcanizumab are given subcutaneously, and eptinizumab is given IV, and these are used to prevent migraines. Remagapent, ubrogapent are given orally and are used for acute migraine attacks. Thanks for watching.